I do have the task of talking you through a simple scissors phrenotomy, which I'm going to aim to do in just a couple of minutes. Um, so if the parents and myself have formed the view that we're looking at a classic tongue tie, to be honest, they're not making it out into the community much anymore. There's so much um, focus on tongue tie now, even in the first days in the hospital setting, that classic tongue ties are not being missed the way they were um, for decades. And that has to be a positive outcome of the, of the um, current tongue tie epidemic, really. Um, but let's say the parents and I have decided that there's an anterior membrane there that we think um, uh, may be impacting on tongue mobility. Um, then I'll have the parents sign a consent form and for those of you who are going to join our neuroprotective developmental pathway in the portal we've got so much material um, to use in your clinic. We've certainly got consent forms for phrenotomy drawn up remembering to check out that the babes had their vitamin K injection and remembering that um, we need to detect a family history of bleeding diathesis but um, once we've signed that, um, I actually ask the parents to wait in another room with the bub while I'm setting up. I have someone in the practice who can help me, who is able to hold the little bubby when, when he or she comes in on the examination couch at a level that's comfortable for me um, by bringing the arms right up extended over the baby's ears with, with some, some extension, some modest extension of the baby's um, cervical spine, but very, very secure and still at that moment when I'm going to do the scissors phrenotomy. Um, I prepare with my headlight, um, gloves. I do use surgical gloves, although technically it doesn't need to be an absolutely sterile procedure. Um, I'll have iris scissors, sharp pointed iris scissors um, because to use the blunt um, scissors requires a different technique that I personally don't think is as safe in our clinical primary care context. So I use the sharp point, pointy iris scissors and um, I'll have gauze available um, and knowing that somewhere in the cupboard there is an ampule of adrenaline um, not that I've ever had to use it, but um, arguably um, soaking a piece of gauze with adrenaline if there was that unexpected situation of um, worrying bleeding. I've explained to the parents that a couple of drops of blood is really normal and I'm not doing deep scissors phrenotomies, uh, uh, deep, deep phrenotomies with scissors. I'm um, only using the scissors in the context of anterior membranes that I think um, um, may deserve release. Um, so um, when my assistant brings the baby in, lies the baby on the examination couch, um, like so my assistant will sit or stand there and hold the little one's head secure. I expose that um, uh, anterior membrane with my forefinger, my gloved forefinger, and I use my thumb to depress the baby's jaw and lower lip. Um, I bring the scissors in and snip two millimetres, about two thirds of the way up, closer to the tongue than to the, the um, floor of the mouth. Um, just a few millimetres snip, and then I'll use um, my forefinger um, pressure over that to use some blunt dissection. And um, then I'll use some gauze to swab away um, any, any bleeding, and typically it's minimal. Um, I might check, occasionally I might think maybe another millimetre or so. Um, and, uh, and then we bring the parents in and the woman moves straight into breastfeeding her baby. Um, so that's the strategy, that's the, the, the way I approach a simple Scissors phrenotomy. Yes. I just wanted to ask on those occasions, not that I'm going to be doing phrenotomy, but on those occasions where you have a client who has um, decided not to have vitamin K, which obviously is for, for clotting, um, 
I know there's vitamin K in breast milk. Is there, is there a time, like if you waited, what would you advise them beyond to have vitamin K? You know, <clears throat> I can't say I've struck that situation. So I guess if I'd struck it, I'd um, start to do my research, but I'm not inclined to take risks. I guess it depends on the age of the baby. Um, and I certainly um, am not doing um, scissors phrenotomy on older babies anyway. Um, so mm, I guess I'd have to do my research and make a judgment call then, Deb. Yep. Yeah. Maybe that's an opportunity to encourage the parents to have vitamin K would we know we're very safe and very effective in preventing hemorrhage and you know if, if, they're, if they're the choice of successful breastfeeding and not successful breastfeeding. Yes, you know the, the, the yes yes that's right um, you know often the, on the, the occasions that I am doing scissors phrenotomy now it's often in a situation where I'm saying to parents I'm actually not convinced it's going to help I don't think this is really the issue um, but jointly the parents have felt, look, they'd just like to have it done to rule it out. Um, because in fact, I w and, and I, I, I won't get started on this now, we're going to have more discussion after Nikki's talk, but so much of the time, um, I, 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 you know, in my view, um, it's, it's an issue of positional instability, fit and hold, and, um, and that anterior membrane is, um, is just not relevant. Um, so, I'll draw a close there and invite Nikki to come for her second talk.